each year. Matter of fact, those that do cut the Department of Medical Science and the Department of Religion. Yeah. Uh, the topic today, can you hear me? No, you need to speak louder. <laughs> <laughs> the topic today is race in quotation marks, racism in America, provenance, sequence, and consequence. The United States is a relatively hardly new uh, Euro American nation incubated as of 1619-20 and hatched in 1776 when it burst into uh, the world scene and made its electrifying declaration of independence attained by armed struggle. Apropos to the topic of our discourse, it bears noting that the American Declaration of Independence says that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It bears noting that it does not explicitly, explicitly say all white men are created equal, which white Americans take for granted, while other Americans have been struggling to realize it. Likewise, the Declaration does not specifically say all men and women are created equal, although in due course that became the Still, since its formation, America has been described as the first universal nation, in that it has been host to myriads of peoples and nations from all over the world in ways no other country has been. America still remains the country of first choice for immigrants worldwide, including peoples of African descent. In the course of its relentless territorial expansion in the New World, America fought bitter battles against indigenous peoples or Native Americans. Survivors have been relegated to autonomous reservations scattered all over the country. It has also achieved accelerated development by brutal exploitation of In his volume, The Gift of Black Folk, W.E.B. Du Bois noted the Negro gear is brawn in prey to fell the forests, till the soil, and make America rich and a prosperous land. It is also important to remember here that in the heyday of slavery in America, slave owners and overseers raped black mothers to have as many slave children as possible from anyone. Slave owners themselves even fathered children or enslaved African women to breed more slaves for labor or for sale. We begin our brief inquiry today on the provenance, sequence, and consequence of race, racism in America, with the latest paleoanthropological research, the startling finding about human lineage published in the journal of science. On October 2, 2009, the discovery consisting of, quote, of more than 110 specimens recovered from 4.4 million year old partial skeleton with uh, much of its skeleton, female hormone skeleton with much of the skull, hands, feet, limbs, and pelvis. It's been designated Artipithecus rapids. It was found in Northeast Africa, specifically in the Afar region of Ethiopia, in the general area where 35 years ago, a 3.2 million year old Australopithecus afarensis, better known as Lucy, was also discovered. With that scientific tracer of human pedigree, as for our endeavor 
in examining the problems of race and racism, we begin by scanning the earliest period with extant records on relations between Ethiopians, stroke Egyptians, Africans, circa 5,000 years back. African-American and Africans, as well as Caribbean writers, including Martin Delaney, W.E.B. Du Bois, William Leo Hansberry, George James, John Jackson, Frank Snowden, Ben Yoke, Ivan Van Saptima, Sheikh Antadion, St. Clair Gray, and others have asserted the primacy of African civilization and its extension to Greece and adjacent territories. In the chapter, The Valley of the Nile, uh, in his 1939 book, Black Folk Now and Then, W.E.B. Du Bois summarizes the positive, normal, and mutually respectful relations between Africans and Greeks from the 9th century BC through 2nd century AD. After citing Homer's Iliad, Iliad on how the Greek god Zeus and others went each year to Ethiopia for 12 days to feast among the blameless Ethiopians and return with absolution and blessings. He lists Greek and Roman writers who described ancient Ethiopian in exalted terms and considered them as the oldest, the wisest, and most just of men. It's to be noted that the reference of Ethiopia means black, means Africa. It's a generic word. Although like other peoples in the area, Athenians, had more slaves than citizens during their time. But these were not African slaves. Greek attitudes towards Africans were generally had more deference than prejudice. They thought African black skin was likely to be due to too much sunshine. Uh, like all human beings, the Greeks were also fallen. With Herodotus, uh, one interesting episode concerning Ethiopian and Africans was Herodotus claiming in his histories that the, uh, uh, the semen ejected by Africans was black. And Aristotle uh, took him to task for that. He said that was an error just because they have black skin, it does not mean that that's the case. On the other hand, he himself said, what is more uh, true is that the nails of Africans are black, because the nails grow out of the skin. Uh, and so he, now one doesn't know whether how they found out <laughs> what, what Herodotus uh, have to say about uh, his, his, his way of looking at things and Aristotle. But this is human error. Uh, uh, but generally, uh, the uh, Greeks were descriptive rather than ascriptive in their uh, definition, designation, uh, and uh, renditions about uh, Africa. Now, that said, the Greeks, uh, during the time of the Greeks, the question of race and racism had no place, had no problems, had no sign at all. Uh, and so, uh, in the view of uh, one prominent scholar on the subject of race and racism, Ivan Hanafor, the author of Race, the History of an Idea in the West, he said, uh, between the expulsion of the Jews and Moors from Spain and the landing of the first Negro in North American colonies in 1619, the word race entered Western language. And he adds that it is unhistorical to perceive the concept of race as we know or think of it, think we know of it today, before the appearance of physical anthropology. Oh. The most exhaustive 
epic study on the Afro-Asiatic roots of Greek and Roman, and hence European and Euro-American civilization, is Professor Martin Bernard's three-volume tome, Black Athena, the Afro-Asiatic Roots of Civilization. 2,118 pages study started in 1987, and the third volume came out in 2006. Now, he broadens the matter, the question of racism, noting that it is difficult to say whether or not racism was unusually strong before the 16th century, the first in which Northern Europeans came in contact with peoples from other continents. Needless to say, it's always Europeans going to these other continents rather than others going to Europe. Bernard concludes his discussion on the roots of civilization the di around the historic dialectical struggles between what he calls the area, the, the, the Afro-Asiatic model and the revisionist area model or, or Eurocentric model in modern parlance. He validates the thesis that ancient Greece was the beneficiary of black African, Ethiopian, Egyptian, civilizing mission. So, we'll use the term the other way. Uh, and it, he proffers in his uh, you know, epic uh, work uh, validation of this thesis to prove that the intellectual futility of the revisionist area of Eurocentric Model. And so the struggle continues. As we now move on to consider the consideration of the sequence and consequence of race racism in America, allow me to confess my wonder. To anyone who even a cursory scanning, let alone a sustained reading of the literature on the subject, can see that race and racism are linked like hand and glove. But it does not take rocket science to figure out which is the hand, which is the glove. Racism is the hand. Race is the glove. So you know, we don't have to go through a lot of literature uh, to know, you know to, to see which comes first. What came first is racism, as we shall later on see what we mean by that. So I, I hope uh, uh, that uh, this, is, uh, this is understood. Race has been contrived in the service of racism, not the other way around. In fact, uh, whereas the concept of race has all but been discredited in, scientific, in the scientific community, racism is still alive, even though as, uh, one writer has said, it remains standing in states. The fact is, it has always been in states. It has never been on the ground. Uh, now, the, the uh, sole purpose of the race myth is to provide rational, even scientific ground for racist thought and behavior in relation between white and non-white, or color and colorless peoples, as I sometimes like to say. 73 years ago, in his well research, pity work that has not been read by the savants on the subject, is the uh, product of the scholar diplomat Ralph Banach. In 1936, he published a book called A World View of Race. <clears throat> he pointed out, for instance, that race is the great American chivalry. Uh, in, 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 after World War I, around World War I, they were doing intelligence tests for new recruits to the army. And he points out that in these tests, this is 
way back in the 1920s, the 1910s and so on, that blacks bred and uh, grown and, and living in the north had higher intelligence uh, IQ numbers than blacks in the south. Likewise, blacks in the, in the north scored higher than whites in the south. And this has been documented over and over. Now, uh, another very, uh, really very uh, well, well, uh, well read and well read uh, and spoken for scholar is uh, uh, Professor Graves, who wrote two books. Uh, one was The Emperor's New Clothes biological theories of race at the millennium. The other was the race myth, why we pretend that race exists in America. In both of these works, he shows brilliantly how fallacious, how useless, how hopeless theories of race have been. And, and he is an evolutionary biologist. For instance, he cites that uh, what is known as uh, uh, the uh, frequency of certain uh, alleles, as they are called in scientific language. Um, and these frequencies are recorded, let's say, for type O blood, in this case. They can be for any type. And they found out that, for instance, type O allele frequencies from 37 to 42 frequencies were found among Eskimos, Ethiopians, Norwegians, Spaniards, Swedes, and 43 to 48 alleles among Aborigines, English, Sicilian, and 55 to 61 frequencies among Nigerians and Icelanders. And the example goes on, there are so many. It's just to show that this question of race and biological determinism does not really stand the test of fact in spite of that. Racism uh, marches on. <clears throat> now, a recent human genome project having mapped 24,000 genes has determined that all human beings are 99.99% alive. And there are, that there are no such things as registration difference. There is a, a California Science Center exhibition, exhibition, it's exposition park. It's still going on, I think. And uh, my friend Jeff and I went to see the other, the other day. There are fascinating, really, finds there. And one of the things, for instance, that everybody thinks they you know, is that sickle cell anemia is restricted only to blacks. But uh, one of the, uh, the things that, 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 that they showed there says that Sickle cell anemia has more to do with place than race. And they point out that although sickle cell anemia is generally taken to be black disease in the US, it is actually related to place, place rather than race. The gene variation that causes it is common in parts of Africa, the Middle East, Southern Europe, and South Asia. Now, you know, we, 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 we can go on and on on this, uh, on this question. But the most important thing is that uh, there is really no uh, uh, question of race and racial differences and so on. It's a fabrication. Okay. Now, we, uh, if we move on then to, uh, to talk about racism, the beast itself, uh, or as Marimba Ani calls it, Murugu, the pale frogs, 
that uh, has uh, you know, come out uh, uh, not complete and is always striving to reach that completeness. And meanwhile, he uh, does have work to, to the world. Uh, and, and that's the imagery of, of the rule. <clears throat> Now, the roots of racism in America can be traced to uh, the early 17th century, when, sadly and regrettably, segments of Africans, unforced, hounded and rounded fellow Africans, and bartered them to euro American slave traders. to be enslaved in America, the Caribbean, and Latin America. Conventional definitions of racism are ubiquitous. There are hundreds and hundreds of them. But no definition really does justice to clearly and uh, uh, without a qualification, I think it really satisfies anyone, either the victim of racism or the observer of racism, uh, fully. Uh, and and uh, the, the works, for instance, among others, W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, Derek Bell, his magisterial work, Race and Racism in American Law, uh, and, and especially Joe Fegan, maybe I'm mispronouncing his name, Fegan, Fegan. He has done fantastic work, and he has published so many works. And, and his latest and most important is Systemic Racism, which I'll have occasion to see a little bit of that later. Now, uh, and, 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 and Francis Cress uh, Wilson, Marimba Ali, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Francis. Uh, Maulana Karega, Dorothy Roberts, uh, and the Indo-Aryan writer, Dinesh D'Souza. But his book on the end of racism could be better understood or read properly if we had a question at the end. So instead of the end of racism, if we could be read the end of racism, he has done fantastic work all the spade work of research for all of us. But the title, the thesis, is not correct. But no, uh, as I said, no, no, no definition does justice to, to the subject. Now, I, I would think that if we could see it like uh, have an alphabet soup uh, of racism, and, and then throw in you know, what we think racism represents. Uh, it may be a little harsh, what I am saying now, but uh, it won't, we won't be outside of the world. Uh, I, I should preface this also by saying that whatever we say about racism, about racist, there are always exceptions. One thing I have learned from my life as a student and now as a teacher in the United States is that whatever you say about anything, there's always an exception. Unfortunately, the exception is not there, but there is always there is an exception. So it doesn't mean that everybody somehow shares you know, whatever we are saying. Uh, among this alphabet you know, soup, components, self-righteousness, homophobia, homophobia, hubris, hatred, in fact, the four-letter word for racism is H-A-T-E. That's really the basic, H-A-T-E. Hatred, prejudice, psychotic, it's, uh, it's nouns and uh, adjectives, bigotry, perpetuation of privilege, power, well, criminality, shallow mind, white supremacy, imbecility, guilt, fear, 
inferiority complex. It's both superiority and inferiority. Denial, contempt, hypocrisy, cruelty. I'm repeating that. Dishonesty, disingenuity, cold bloodedness. And one can add another to the to the soup of racism. Psychologists and psychiatrists are better trained to analyze and diagnose these racist syndromes and manifestations. Now, uh, at this point, I think we can go to uh, our discussion. I'm going to begin with the 2005 statement on upporting every black baby to lower crime in the United States, offered by Dr. William G. Bennett. Perhaps some of you remember this, but it's really uh, the epitome of the ultimate purpose, the ultimate conclusion of racism in America. Uh, so let, let's read it together. Uh, somebody calls him in here on his radio show. By the way, uh, Dr. Bennett is a man who has written books about this big uh, on, uh, on what he calls the uh, uh, Moral Compass was one of the big books that he wrote, and uh, American Virtues, The Book of Virtues in America, and many others, especially children's books. About 20 books he has written on morality, virtuosity. Uh, <laughs> and now he's a, and he was a minister, he was a state uh, department uh, it's Secretary of Education under Reagan, and he was also the drug czar. Uh, I mean, so he's a man way, way up high. Uh, and now, in 2005, in his Morning in America radio show, somebody calls and he says to him, I noticed the national media talk a lot about the loss of revenue to fund Social Security. And I was curious whether the abortions that have happened since Roe v. Wade uh, fund Social Security as we know it today. Sorry, the lost revenue from the people who have been aborted in the last 30 something years could fund Social Security as we know it today. So this guy asks him this question in his radio show and he says, uh, assuming they're all productive citizens, color, even if a portion of them were it would be an enormous amount of revenue made, but we don't know what the costs will be. Two, I think abortion disproportionately occurs among single women, no? Now he's also asking the question. He doesn't know this thing, so he has to ask also. And then, I don't know the exact statistics, but quite a bit are, yeah? Bennett says, I would not argue for the pro-life position based on this. By the way, he is pro-life. I mean, he is pro-life. He's against abortion. He's a Republican. He's, uh, yeah, his views are very conventional. So uh, I would not argue for the pro-life position based on this. It cuts both ways, you know. One of the arguments in this book, Free Economics, Free Economics is, um, some you know, this book, uh, that raises, that talks about all kinds of things. Uh, and, and he says that, that one of the reasons crime is down is that abortion is up. Well, call it. Well, I don't think that statistic is accurate. Now, this is the punchline. Bennett says, well, I don't think it's either. But I do know that it's true that if you wanted to reduce crime, you could abort every black baby in this country. 
and your crime rate would go down. Now you see, the question was on some other subject. Now he turns it into his pet subject. Uh, by the way, the first book that he worked on was uh, uh, on the Parker case, uh, you know, early on in the 73. Uh, so, so he says, uh, abort every black baby in this country, and your crime rate would go down. That would be an impossible, ridiculous, and morally reprehensible thing to do. But your crime rate would go down. So you see, he repeated it again, that this would happen. So these far out, these far reaching, extensive extrapolations are, I think, tricky. Now, by the way, 2005 is also the, the year of, the, of uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, in, in uh, Louisiana. Katrina. Sure. Yes, Katrina. You see the, the, the coincidence? In the same year, you see Katrina, you see uh, the devastation especially of black people there. And now you see this prescription. Every black baby. Now, just imagine, just imagine, you know, how are you going to do this? What, 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 what is the logistics? What, what, what would happen? When would they go out and, and, and find any woman, every woman, whether she's pregnant or not, to make sure she, that she doesn't procreate? Uh, I, what, what, what kind of uh, thing is this? But this is, this is what, what the consequence of racism ultimately had, as was seen during the Holocaust in the 1930s and uh, 40s. So now this is an open, free, with impunity prescription for aborting every black baby. Now, uh, now, crime, one of the interesting things is he did not define crime. W what crime is he talking about? Who are the people that perpetrate most of the crime? Huh? Who are they who perpetrate most of the crime anyway? And what kinds of crime are we talking about? So as an example, I, I, cite, I took this. This is uh, in 2007. There is this uh, Innocence Project, which you know, is a voluntary project which, which tries to intervene in cases of death penalty, prisoners, and so on. Uh, and through DNA, brings about evidence that those who are standing to be, to be, to be electrocuted or whatever uh, are actually not, not the, uh, not the, uh, the, 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 uh, the ones that, that should be, they should be, they should be set free. And, and so here you have, in 2007, they had 200 prisoners released by DNA evidence. And some of them, that were released had already served 20 years in the top row, as you can see. And 78.26 of them that were exonerated were African Americans. 78%. So automatically, when you go to prison, you are assumed to be guilty as charged. But in preponderant cases, African Americans are subjected to that more than any other. Does that make African Americans more criminal? How come? It doesn't stand to reason. But they are incarcerated. Uh, they are incarcerated, and over a million African Americans are in jail. No. Then, 15 to 19 years out of those that uh, you have 59% African Americans who have been exonerated. Okay? And uh, 
Okay. Now, for 10 to 14.5 years, 60% of African Americans, I mean, of, of the prisoners, were African Americans that have been picked. In all cases, you can see that the majority who have been jailed and you know, sentenced to die or spend the rest of their life in were African Americans who were in some way. Uh, up to 9.5 years, you have 63.27%. This, by the way, you can check it's New York Times, May 20, 2007. So this brings up the question, when he says that if you want to bring down crime, you should abort every black baby. Crime, who is the one who's doing the crime? Yeah? And on whom is crime being perpetuated? I'm sorry. I, I, uh... OK. Uh, he didn't bother to go into that. Let's go to the next thing. Now, this is Professor Fagan's dimensions of systemic racism. Uh, we, we, we don't have to go through it all, but what he shows is that racism is a complete package. It horizontally, vertically, economically, socially, politically, in every uh, you know, aspect of life, racism is embedded and it is uh, very, very, uh, 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 you can't escape it, especially for African Americans and to a certain extent for uh, Native Americans and others. All right. Now, uh, if there is a very nice quote by Dick Gregory, the only way that Dick Gregory can put it. It says, for, for years they told us where to sit, where to eat, and where to live. Now they want to dictate our bedroom habits. First the white man tells me to sit in the back of the bus. Now it looks like he wants me to sleep under the bed. Back to the days of slavery, black folks couldn't grow kids enough, fast enough for white folks to harvest. Now that we've got a little taste of power, white folks want us to call a moratorium on having children. Now, if we take Dr. Bennett's description for genocide to its logical conclusion, we have just a, a brief one chart here uh, using the United States Census Bureau data as well as the CDC uh, Center for Disease Control figures as well and figuring about 2% per annum population growth uh, for African Americans and what we did was to, to to chart if Mr. Bennett's or Dr. Bennett's proposition were to start taking effect at 2011, 2011, and let the whole thing, the trajectory, work, assuming that uh, uh, just a normal population uh, life expectancy rate as, as it is today will continue. Uh, if the normal process as of now continues, you will see that by 2084, uh, it's not a shown, the dates are not shown, the uh, figures, but the arrow points, by 2004, one can project that there will be 102 million 900 something, so 103 million African Americans, if just a normal process continues. 
But if the abortion policy comes into effect, however, you know, it's, it, it's done, then by the, by 2084, <coughs> by the year 2084, there will not be a black person alive in the United States. And of course, it's, it's an if, but it's something to contemplate, it's something to keep in mind. It's, it's, uh, so uh, in this day and age, in the 21st century, in America, you have someone, someone who is educated, someone who is respected, saying that you have to abort every black baby. Whereas the majority of crimes are not committed by Africa. They are committed against Africa, in fact. And you are not going to, be, to get rid of crime by just killing off all African Americans. But of course, because of the slavery, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the powers that be have always been very well about the place that African Americans can have in society outside of slavery. So very early on, they planned ways of ex expelling or relocating, colonizing African Americans elsewhere, in the Caribbean, Latin America, or eventually in uh, Liberia. They did not want free African Americans stay anywhere. So they, they, were, they, they, they were you know looking forward, they were looking to the future. And, and so and now you know, everything comes to the open. And and this is uh, the, one of the major consequences of uh, racism. This is uh, this is uh, horrendous, but uh, it is it is it is it is true. And as I said before, there is no foundation for racism, but the consequence of racism is very very uh, very very solid and very frightening. Now, there is also the other question of. Uh, the question of uh, behavior being determined only by biology. Over and over again, experts have said it's not only biology that determines behavior, but it's a mix of biology and environment. Uh, one very, very uh, learned article on uh, behavioral genetics points out that behavior is a complex phenomenon, neither attributable to single causes nor easily passed among multiple, multiple causes. All behavior results from the interaction of genes, environment, developmental history, and evolutionary processes that build the brain to function in the way it does. The human organism is neither genetically determined nor environmentally determined, but rather possesses multiple potentials that arise through the successive interactions of genes and environments. This goes the same for white people, for brown people, for black people, for black people. It's not just for one group of people. And there is no gene or set of genes or allele or set of alleles that are, that are for or directly responsible for criminal behavior. But no matter what science says, the notion that African Americans are the ones that are responsible for crime still persists, and of course they are now. Before I move on, I should say that we have not taken into account gang violence, 
homicide, domestic violence, all kinds of other violence also perpetrated that could, if the issues rise up, that could accelerate the demise. So that instead of 2084, if these things are hiked up, it would bring the date closer than 2084. But we, we, we don't have the data, the full data, to put into this, to, to say that if this and this happens, this will so uh, uh, this is the message briefly uh, and left a lot of things out there and considerations that uh, I want to share with you. There was some comment uh, the, uh, even President Bush recommended, which is, of course, part of the course. And uh, there were some uh, others also that said, uh, no, you should consider. He kept saying, he, he would not apologize. He kept saying, well, you know, uh, as I said, you know, it's incomprehensible and so on, but uh, this will happen. Uh, and, and after a while, the whole thing was Time. Nothing happened. He still carries on his radio program. Uh, the, uh, the writers of economics, however, were not uh, amused by how he used their data statistics to suit his own theory, rather by uh, denying their own conclusion. And they said that how can you say that? Uh, Abortion does not affect social security. Why do you say abortion will affect crime? Uh, and they took him to task. The beta version of the book, uh, they have done that. And they have also transcribed the whole uh, radio interview in their book as well. But nothing really done, just papers. Who have been incarcerated, who have been 
convicted, have been convicted, have been incarcerated wrongly in the first place. And, and this shows why that is included in the first place. That's that's the point. It's not so much the numbers there. Well, were 78 percent of the whites also found innocent? Not according to the statistics. Well, you can give us the figures, really. If you were comparing black yeah, bias, well, black the, the, reason, the reason I concentrated on this is because of this comment by Bennett that crime and black is synonymous. Therefore, if you want to lower the crime, you have to get rid of blacks. It's for that reason. Thank you, Rachel.